Hi, I'm Dylan from RL Detman, and today we're going to be going through a 24-month maintenance on an Airco Benchmark 3000 boiler. Um, first, I want to show you everything that comes in the maintenance kit. First off, we've got our, our instruction manual that walks you through step-by-step -step everything that you need to do to do the maintenance. Um, all the pieces and parts in here, we have a replacement flame sensor. We have a replacement low water cutoff with capacitor. This is our replacement uh, igniter injector where that gas, pilot gas comes in and ignites, lights the pilot. Along with that, there are a few clocking washers, and we'll get into that later in the video, and I'll explain those so that the uh, igniter is pointing in the right direction. Uh, the two little orange gaskets here are for the condensate trap. The, uh, the outer round one is for the lid that goes on. The larger disc is for inside of the trap. Generally, it's not used with the newer style, but they still send one. So if you have an older style with a larger metal float, you can still use it. Next, we have a, a blower gasket, and we'll show you where that goes as we start tearing things apart. It goes between the, uh, the air intake and the blower. We have our burner gasket in this box here. It's a, a foil type gasket, and it comes with, they now send it with two release gaskets, which one will go on each side of the burner so that when you go to take it apart, it doesn't stick and you should not have to scrape it. It should come off very easily, which is a very nice feature. Um, this gasket here is for our exhaust manifold gasket. Um, I generally don't change those on a maintenance unless there's a gas leak or if we need to tear apart to see the bottom of the heat exchanger for some reason, but they send one with every maintenance kit. And then also the maintenance kit, maintenance kits come in two different options. You can order it with just a Canon air filter cleaning kit or a replacement air filter. Um, obviously the air filters are made by Canon. They are cleanable and they'll last a long time as long as you take care of them, keep them clean and don't beat on them too hard. So you have two options. So if you need a, need a replacement filter, you can order it with a filter. If you don't, you can order it just with the cleaning kit. Before you start working on any kind of boiler, you want to make sure it's locked out, tagged out for safety. You want to make sure you shut off main power, and lock it out. You don't want anybody turning it on while you're working on it. You also want to make sure you isolate your gas. Our main valve is up here. We also want to make sure we isolate supply and return water, because when we turn the, change the low water cutoff, we're going to need to drain a little bit of water. Okay, we're going to start with uh, replacing the burner gaskets. In order to do that, we need to remove the flame sensor, the igniter injector, and the O2 sensor. The flame sensor, the uh, plug just pulls off and you can set it aside. Just got two Phillips screws holding it in. And the screw holes are offset, so you cannot put this in backwards. And there is a small compressed gasket underneath the sensor to keep it sealed. Once you break that gasket free, the flame sensor will pull out. You can see there's some buildup on there. Um, we'll replace it once we put everything back together, and then we'll, we'll clean this one up and keep it as a spare. The igniter injector, the gas line comes in, and there's a, a 7 16 compression fitting on here. Once we get that compression free, Set the, the uh, solenoid aside. The spark wire just pops off also. Set that aside. And the igniter itself has a one inch nut or a one inch wrench to fit it. Make that free. And it, generally they come out pretty easy once you break them free. Just want to pull it out gently so you can inspect it and check its condition. And this is where the clocking washers will go when we when we go to replace it with a new one. We'll make sure it's pointing in the right direction. And there's an O2 sensor that is right here. That's a, a 7 8 wrench to pop that off. And that that also, we'll just kind of set aside, and we'll be able to clean that up and make sure it's not doesn't have any buildup on it. From there, we'll we'll start getting our bolts loosened on our burner manifold here, and on our air intake, we will also loosen these 
four bolts and be able to pull off the air intake. Okay, so we've got a bracket on the bottom here. There were two nuts holding that on, and then that bracket will slide out of your way. That helps support the manifold, the intake. And we'll, we've got our four quarter inch Allen key bolts here. They had half inch nuts on the back side, which we, we removed. And we had our eight seven sixteenths nuts with lock washers and washers all the way around the burner. We remove. Should be it. Now, if the release gaskets work like they should, this should pull off fairly easily. There we go. This is cast aluminum, so it's pretty lightweight. Then we have access to our burner. Um, here's what, what I was talking about the release gaskets. They should just pull right up and allow the gaskets to come off so you don't have to scrape it and it doesn't come apart on you. There's the old gasket with the two release gaskets, which we will be replacing out of our new kit. And from there, the burner just drops in. It's just a wire mesh burner. Typical Lonox wire mesh burner made for Erico. And that will pull out and clean. We'll do that in the next step. And this will be a good time to inspect your tube bundle. So I'll get a flashlight and we'll look down in here. This is what the top of the tube bundle looks like. There's a, a little bit of buildup on it, but it's not, not too bad. This is when you get in there with a hose and rinse it down, clean it out. If you do see any buildup, this is the time to take note of it. Now, with the uh, Lonox burners like this, you'll want to take a minute and inspect it. Make sure there's no holes, no cuts in it. Make sure everything's intact. Um, then you want to take either compressed air, nitrogen, CO2, and blow through it. Blow out any dust or debris that might be stuck in the mesh. Okay, so we've, we've rinsed out our tube bundle, washed that all away. Um, we've blown out our burner here and I've taken a vacuum to it, made sure there's no debris on it, which it was pretty clean, thankfully, to the uh, Canon air filters. Uh, the burner just drops back in place and there's a, a channel on the lip of the top of the heat exchanger that it sits in. So I make sure it sits flush to the burner plate here. And after that, you have your three gaskets. Your lower release gasket has these tabs on it so that you can get it off easy next time. Get that in place. So you definitely want to make sure that one goes on first because it's got these plastic tabs for lifting off next time. And then your actual gasket, foil type gasket. You gotta make sure your larger holes line up to where your larger components are. That way you can get everything in like it's supposed to. And then your upper release gasket so that your foil gasket doesn't stick to your intake. And once that's all in and lined up, um, we'll put the manifold or the intake back on. Should just drop right on. Shouldn't shouldn't fight you. It's, got a little bit of room for maneuverability. Now when we're doing these bolts, or the, the hex nuts with washers and lock nuts, you want to put them all on and then you want to torque them down to between 30 and 35 foot pounds, the manual calls for, and you want to do a crisscross pattern like on a tire so you get a nice even seal. You want to make sure these are all on and tight before you do your four bolts on your blower. So you want to make sure you got a good seal on your intake here, on your burner gasket. So we've got our eight bolts here that we torque down to 30 to 35 foot pounds. Got that all nice and tight with a crisscross pattern. And we did our four bolts that hold our blower to our intake. Um, we replaced the rubber gasket that came with it in here, the square rubber gasket. We also tightened up our bracket here so everything is now back tight to where it should be. Now reassembly continues. We'll, we'll take our O2 sensor and get that in reinstalled. We cleaned up the end of it with a little bit of a, 
uh, Brillo pad, SOS pad. Just cleaned it, made sure it was nice and nice and clean and no buildup on it. Look at that. Plug that back in. This is a typical automotive O2 sensor that is used. It's used on the Platinums for O2 trim. However, on the standard benchmarks, it's just used to monitor O2 on the front screen. With the igniter, um, I mentioned earlier that it has these clocking washers that comes with it. So what you want to do is, with no washers on there, put it in and see where it stops. If you look in the manual, it'll show you the direction they want it pointing. If you, if you draw a line from the gas intake tube to the spark probe, right now we're pointing straight out this way towards the back of the unit. The manual will show you, you want it pointing... They give you 120 degrees. They, they'll show you a good diagram in there. They want it pointing almost towards the sight glass here, the observation port. But since we're about 90 degrees off where it stops, we we'll want to take it off and add one clocking washer because one clocking washer will stop us at about 90 degrees from where we were. If you need to go 180 degrees, you would use two clocking washers. If you need to go three quarters of a turn, you would use all three. Now we've got one clocking washer in should stop pretty close to where they wanted it. There, now our, our gas intake tube and our spark are all pointing towards the observation port. That's pretty close to where they want it. We'll snug that down with our one inch wrench. Then we have a new ferrule for our compression for our gas. And get our solenoid on there and start the compression fitting. Make sure it's, it's bottomed out inside of that compression fitting so that when we tighten it, the ferrule clamps down on that pilot tube there. That finger tight and we'll take our 7 sixteenths and snug it to tighten that ferrule. Snug there. Pop on our Ignition wire just pushes on. And then we all have our our new flame sensor. Um, again, with the igniter and the flame sensor, we'll we'll clean up the old ones with a like a 3M uh, Brillo pad, Scotch Brite pad. Clean it up and keep them for emergency spares. But with a two-year kit, it comes with new ones, so we will replace them. And again, I told you before that these uh, screw holes are offset. So you can't put it in backwards. As you can see there, the holes are one's closer to the rod and the other's not. So we'll just put that in there and get the two screws going. And just snug those down because it's got that uh, gasket in there that will compress a little bit. You don't want to over tighten it and get it really compressed. Okay, good. All right, so we got our two screws going in. So we just want to snug them. We don't want to over tighten them and compress that pad too much. Good and snug. Just to keep a seal. And we got our sensor wire. It clicks on pretty good. It's on there good and snug. Our next step will be either cleaning the air filter or replacing it. Since this kit that we got here has a new filter in it, we're going to replace it. However, to clean it, it's a two-part cleaning kit that K&N sells. Uh, there's a, a cleaner that once you pull the filter off, you spray it down with the cleaner and let it soak in. And then wash the filter out in a slop sink. You know, get it real good and clean from the outside or from the inside out. Uh, the next step after that is to let it dry completely. Whether you put it in front of a fan or something along those lines, or let it sit and dry out. After that, you take the air filter oil and spray an even coating on the whole filter up and down. You know, get the whole filter coated in that bright pink oil that K&N is known for. That helps pick up all the particulates. As for changing the filter, it's just as simple as it's got one large hose clamp you loosen up. It just pops right off like a typical air filter. Take your new air filter. Slide it on, just a, a rubber connection, and tighten, tighten the hose clamp, and she's ready to go. So our next step is cleaning the condensate trap. It's got four thumb screws here to take the lid off, and the newer traps do have a, a clear glass 
top or plastic top so you can see through and see if the water's backing up or not. If it's backing up and touching the top of the glass or the plastic, you know that the restriction is downstream from here. But you just pop off your lid. There's this O-ring here that comes out. This one was broken. Um, what I generally do is there's there's a little plastic float ball in here, which does get corroded up. So you're going to definitely want to clean that. I generally just use Simple Green. Spray it down and wipe it down good with paper towels. At the same time, spray down the trap because we're going to clean that out with towels as well. I get as much of the grime and stuff off of here because if you get enough stuff on there, it can cause the, tr the ball to stick to the bottom. So that's cleaned up. It's still a little stained, but you want to make sure it's doesn't have any holes in it to where it's filling up with water and not floating like it should. I'll leave that aside for now. You can spray down the trap really good to get it cleaned out. Reach in as far as you can. Sometimes you use a screwdriver to get in there good and run the paper towels around and get them cleaned out. Work at it and get as much of it out of there as you can. Clean off the top. That way you can get a good seal with your O-ring. At this point, this is where they send the larger disc. That was used on the older style that they used to use a, a larger metal ball float instead of the plastic. They generally don't ship with the disc anymore, but they ship the maintenance kit with it just in case you're using that. Um, other than that, you just drop your ball back in. Take your new O-ring gasket. Should set right in place. Set her back in and put the four screws in. All right, after we clean the uh, trap, most boilers, especially in Michigan, uh, it's code to have an acid neutralizer. Uh, this is the brand that Detman supplies from BKI Industries. It's basically just a holding tank with, a, with some limestone, specific limestone rocks in it that will neutralize the acidic condensate before it goes down a drain. Generally what you'd want to do is spray it down with Simple Green, you know, if the rocks are slimy, gross, or you could even cut it out and bring it to a slop sink and empty it, refill it with brand new rocks if you want after you clean it. Again, just make sure it's not slimy and gross and building up water back up. Once the boiler is running, you should have condensate coming out of your neutralizer. A steady stream if you're below generally 140 degrees. This is to replace our low water cutoff probe. Um, again, the boiler is valved off to supply and return and we drained off the water to lower than this level so we don't get wet. First thing is unplug our wire connection. We got this loose, so once we pull that out, we'll take the whole capacitor and everything with it. A little bit of water, but not much. Um, our new one, I've already got it all taped up with Teflon tape with our brand new capacitor to it. The CSD one, it's good to pull these out and clean them yearly and then change them every two years like the manufacturer recommends. hook our wire back up and that'll be it. Now finished our 24 month maintenance on this Airco Benchmark 3000. With that you would now fire the boiler, go through all your combustion testing, go through and test all your safeties or if required in your state which it is here in Michigan you would go through and do CSD1 testing. It would be a good time to do all that right now and do all your CSD1 paperwork. Um, if you need help getting maintenance kits, contact us at RL Detman. Any of our customer service reps can find you your part numbers and direct you with what you need. Or if you have any other questions, call our office and we can answer them for you. Thank you.